Ever since I started using Anchor to record my podcast, the entire process has been seamless. Anchor has everything that I need to record and edit my podcast directly from my phone or my computer. Additionally, Anchor goes one step further and distributes my podcast for me without me having to do anything so that it can be heard on Spotify, Apple iTunes, iHeartRadio, and the many other streaming platforms that are out there. And the best part about the entire thing is that every single time someone listens to my podcast, cha-ching, I make money. Yes, honey. I get to monetize my podcast with no minimum listenership or no minimum downloads. So if you've been considering starting your own podcast, everything you need to make a podcast is on Anchor. So make sure you head on over, download the free Anchor app, or go to anchor.fm to get started. My name is Avery Ruffin, and you're listening to The Nancy Ruffin Show. You are tuned in to The Nancy Ruffin Show, a digital global classroom where individuals across all ages, backgrounds, and career levels tune in for guidance and motivation to live life on their own terms. Hosted by award-winning author, transformation coach, and the self-proclaimed Latina Oprah, The Nancy Ruffin Show is where inspiring thought leaders, modern-day influencers, and social game changers come to discuss their own personal journeys and have real conversations about the journey to success. It's where the next generation of leaders come to tap into their potential, ignite their fire, and expand their self-awareness. So if you're ready to power up and blaze trails of positive change, then you're in the right place. Let's get started. You are tuned in to another episode of the Nancy Ruffin Show. It is your girl, Nancy Ruffin, and thank you for joining me once again for what is going to be another dope episode. I hope you had a chance to check out our last episode, God's Plan, where I was talking a little bit about how sometimes what we think our plan is supposed to be isn't really aligned with the plan that God has for us and being able to shift and pivot from what we think we're supposed to be doing to doing what we're actually supposed to be doing. Yeah, you should go and listen to it. Um, I talked a little bit about my own personal journey and I think that uh, it's a really great episode. I've gotten a lot of great feedback. So if you missed it, make sure to check it out. Um, this week we're going to be talking a little bit about the events I held at Google last week, um, as a part of the fierce woman programming that we're doing. Um, you know, we're, we're focusing a lot on personal and professional development. So we want to also be a resource to those of you who are looking to, grow within your career, or maybe you have a side hustle that you want um, to level up in, or maybe you're an entrepreneur who's looking to grow and expand your business. So a lot of our upcoming programming and events and workshops are going to be focused on helping you do that. You know, we're still going to be doing, you know, the purpose work and helping you all discover your purpose, making sure that you are aligned with the things that you love and are passionate about and the things that bring you joy and being able to tie all of that into meaningful work. Um, you know, sometimes we, we think that where we currently are placed right now, meaning the job that we're in, the role that we're playing, the position that we have, that that somehow isn't tied to the bigger picture of our lives. But let me tell you guys, all of it, every single thing is connected. And you may not be able to see it now, but I promise you 10 years down the line, it's all going to make sense. Um, So I want to talk a little bit about that. But before we get into the Grow Your Vision event, which was phenomenal, by the way, and if you were there, then you know, and if you weren't, you guys missed such an amazing lineup of panelists, the 
Google offices, the space that we had was absolutely beautiful. They sponsored all of the beverages. We had unlimited wine, beer, soda, water. I mean, for the entire duration of the event, we had some bomb ass food that was sponsored by Mott Haven Bar. I mean, we had fried chicken, we had totones, we had a beautiful salad presentation, fruits, we had sandwiches. I mean, we had a little bit of everything for everyone. And then we had oof, the bomb ass sweet treats by Lushy Treats. And her her cakes were so good because they were infused with alcohol, um, you know. So that was a nice treat. And then, of course, we had our resident baker, Cake Pops by Kayla, who has been with me and the organization from the very beginning. We absolutely love Kayla. And today she actually announced on social media that her family is going to be expanding and they are expecting another baby boy in March 2020. So congratulations to you, Kayla. God bless you. Being a mom of two is no easy feat. (laughs) Take it from someone who knows. But nonetheless, babies are a blessing. Um, And I know that your oldest son is going to be an excellent big brother. Um, But I want to kind of just bring you guys up to date onto some of the things that I'm going to be doing within the next couple of months in case you're interested in attending some of these events. On November 15th, I will be part of the New York City Latina Writers Group 13-year anniversary happening at the Alianza Dominicana Cultural Center in Washington Heights. And the New York City Latina Writers Group is really special to me because when I first got on to the writers um I guess when I got into the writer's community, when I first started sharing my writing publicly, this was one of the groups that I joined um, and they really supported me and my work in really branching out and the way that I did. And this is also kind of ties back to that work, though I'm a writer by trade and it's what I love to do, but all of that work that I was doing back then you know, really help to cultivate who I am today and the way that I'm able to speak in in front of crowds, the events that I hold, um, my being able to write my self-help book, Live on Purpose, you know, it was all cultivated as a part of the work that I did with this group. And the founder of the group, Alicia Anabel Santos, is one of my dearest friends. We don't get to see each other as much as we used to because life is busy and we're both doing great things in our respective lives. Um, But she's one of my closest friends. And when I was on my motherhood journey and when I was struggling to get pregnant, she introduced me to Gloria Rodriguez, who, as many of you know, because I talk about her often, was very influential in the healing work that I did and also the healing work that I continue to do with the Fierce Woman and how I have been able to share that with all of you and all of the women and men who attend my workshops. You know, I use the tools that I learned with her and I invested an entire year of my life to my own healing and to working with her. And so I met Gloria through Alicia And so when I tell you that everything is connected, believe me, everything is connected. You may not see it now, but in due time, it will reveal itself. So I'm excited that I will be sharing some of my own work. I will be reading um, from some of my favorite Latina authors um, who have inspired my own writing. And I'm really excited about doing this because I haven't done um, writing events in a very long time just because of the direction that my career has been going. So this is kind of taking me back to my roots. Um, So if you're free November 15th and if you're near Washington Heights, I would love for you to come and and support. I would love to see you Um, and it will allow you to see me in a in a different lens, if you have not been exposed um, to any of my writing, or if you've never seen me perform any of my writing, this is a great opportunity to do that. 
Also on November 20th, I have been uh, invited to be the keynote speaker at Prospanica's Top Latino Leaders Under 40 um, Awards. And this is a professional organization of individuals. Um, it used to be called the National Society of Hispanic MBAs, um, and then they changed to Prospanica. But, you know, it's really um, an organization where professional Latinos come together um, and they're celebrating the top Latino leaders under 40. And they're also going to be giving away um, some scholarships um, to you know, to youth that are in college. And I'm really proud and excited to, to say that the Fierce Woman um, is providing a $500 scholarship to one of the recipients. And so it's really an honor to have been asked, um, one, to present um, these scholarships and to also be the keynote speaker. And this is um, open to the public. I think the tickets are $20. It's taking place at 55 Water Street, at S&P Global headquarters. Um, so also, so if you're in the downtown area, if you're free, if you want to come connect with some Latino professionals, this is a great opportunity to do that and to network. You never know who you can meet, who you're going to connect with. Um, you know, so you should come through and show your girl some love and support. Also, uh, December 14th, it is our annual Fierce Woman end of year celebration. This event is one of my favorites because it's where we get to celebrate all of our accomplishments that we have been able to manifest throughout the year. So this is specifically for my vision board attendees. This past year, I, I held four vision board workshops. And so I know many of you have crushed your goals because we've been in constant communication throughout the year. So I really want you to come out and celebrate yourself because, yo, it is not easy you know, um, setting goals and being able to stick to them and accomplish them. So kudos to all of you who have been able to do that. And I just want to be, just want to remind you that you didn't have to accomplish every single goal on your vision board. If you accomplished one goal, that is worthy of celebration. Because let me tell you, I know how hard it is to commit to something, to stick to it, to follow through, and to get it done. So if you had one accomplishment, come through, let's celebrate that. Um, and just know that whatever you haven't accomplished on this year's vision board, you can add it to next year's vision board. And you keep working towards those goals until they get accomplished. I mean, and some goals you won't be able to accomplish in a year. Some goals require years um, before you can accomplish them. So... Come through December 14th, Mott Haven Bar in the Bronx from 2 to 7 p.m. Let's get our party on. And then last and definitely not least, I have already um, started promoting the annual Vision Board Workshop for 2020. Um, so that's happening January 4th. Tickets have already gone on sale. I sent the link to those on my mailing list. So if you're on my mailing list, you should have already received it. We've had a number of people purchase their tickets already. One thing I want to add is that I'm only adding, I only have 30 seats for this workshop. I was very intentional with the number because when I have large groups, it's just harder for me to give everyone the attention that I like. Um, so for that reason, I'm keeping it down to 30. We've already sold eight tickets, I believe, within a matter of a day. Um, that means we have 22 tickets left and we're only in November. Tomorrow, the link becomes open to the general public. So I'm going to encourage you, don't wait till the last minute to purchase your ticket because there might not be any seats left. And once it's sold out, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do for you. I can't add any more space. Um, it's not one of those things. So 30 is the limit. If you want to go, make sure you get your ticket and secure your seat. That way you don't get left out. So I think that pretty much um, takes care of all of the 
housekeeping items for this episode. When we come back after this break, I'm going to talk about the Grow Your Vision event, some of the highlights from that event, and some tangible things you can start doing um, so that you can level up in your career, in your business, or in your brand. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? When I was first trying to get this podcast off the ground, I had so many questions. Like, how do I record an episode? How do I get my show into all of the apps people like to listen to? And how do I make money from my podcast? And the answer to every one of these questions was super simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and super easy to use. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast, which means that you can get paid to podcast right away. So if you've always wanted to start a podcast and make money doing it, then head over to anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. I can't wait to hear your podcast. I'm Alexa, and you're listening to my mommy. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. You are tuned in to the Nancy Ruffin Show. That was my baby, Alexa. (laughs) Today's her birthday. She officially turns four years old, even though she's like four going on 40. She's been super excited about her birthday the entire weekend. You know, it was her birthday weekend, so she was getting away with murder. <laughs> we allowed her to pretty much do whatever she wanted because she was quote unquote the birthday girl. Um, but after today, we revert back to normal because this kid is a whole entire mess. And if you guys have ever watched my Insta stories, then you know what I'm talking about. She's spunky. She's feisty, super independent. She has a really great personality that's going to serve her well when she's older. Not so much as a little girl um, when she's trying to debate and fight mommy and daddy. But that's another episode for another day. Um, But I wanted to kind of talk a little bit um, about that and how I've integrated, you know, my kids even in this podcast that I do because at the Grow Your Vision event last week, one of the questions that was posed, you know, to the panelists was, you know, how do we manage, you know, to balance um, family life with, you know, our work, uh, you know, and how, how do we make time to do the things that we love and we're passionate about while still maintaining a family and, and uh, you know, children and husbands, spouses, all that. And, you know, one of the things that I personally shared is that there's never a balance. Um, and I think that we have to, stop using that term, you know, work-life balance, because it's not so much, you know, balancing it, but more, and Jason Rosario actually talked about this, was how do you integrate, um, you know, the different parts of your life, so it's not like you're balancing anything, it's just a part of your life, so how do you take your home life and integrate that with your business, with your profession, with your creativity and all of those things. Um, And a part of that is also understanding and realizing where you have to have, make certain sacrifices. You know, um, for me, I try to include my children as much as I can, because for me, it's important that they understand that you have to make time for the things that you love, for the things that fulfill you, for the things that bring you the most joy, you know, and I have to be that example to them. And the way that I do that is the example of the drop. You know, one day I was sitting here, you know, recording the podcast and they came down to where I record and, you know, they were asking questions and, you know, I could have brushed them away and I could have said, no, mommy's working. But instead of doing that, what I did was like, okay, let me show you what mommy does. 
And, you know, do you want to do this? And so they were super excited. And so I allowed them to record, you know, what that five second drop and it made them feel great. It allowed them to be a part of my process. And once they did that, they were okay. They were fine going back upstairs and letting me continue doing the work that I was doing. Now, had I just barked at them initially, had I said, no, uh, mommy's working, we can't do this right now, they would have kept on because what they really want was my attention. And so the minute that I was able to give them my attention while simultaneously still doing my work, I was able to integrate both parts of my life. So, you know, if this is something that you struggle with, you know, find ways that you can start integrating your personal life with your professional life because it will make things that much easier. I also don't want to overlook the importance of sacrifice. There are going to be times where you may not be able to do that and you're going to have to sacrifice family time, time with your friends, you know, time doing things that you love. But because you're trying to build something great that in the long run is going to, you know, might might set you up financially and, you know, in your career or we never know. And so, you, you know, you have to ask yourself, what are you willing to sacrifice in the moment so that you can have that outcome, you know, in the future? So it's not so much about balance as it is about integration, um, a term that I often like to use is juggling. Like I'm always constantly juggling different things at a time. I always have one ball up in the air and my hope is that I don't drop any. The reality is that sometimes I do drop one, sometimes I drop them all, but I don't let that stop me. I pick them back up and I start juggling again. You know, we have to keep moving. There's always going to be situations that we don't expect. There are always going to be curveballs. There are always going to be things that happen unexpectedly that we might not be prepared for. But we cannot let those things stop us. We have to figure out how we can, you know, we think think it through. We have to be able to shift and pivot and bob and weave with the punches, you know, and we got to keep going. You might get knocked down, but you know what? Just because you get knocked down doesn't mean you have to stay down. You have to figure out how you're going to get yourself back up and then you keep moving and you learn whatever lesson that was trying to teach you. And then next time you dodge that, that hit, right? You might get hit from another angle, right? But it won't be the same one. Um, so all of it is just about being able to push past these obstacles, these things that are often put in our path to see how bad we want something, you know, because those of us who want it bad enough, we're not going to stop until we get it, no matter what presents itself. But those who are not really about it, those of us who are not really committed, they're going to let one that one thing that knocks them down, keep them down. So you have to ask yourself, how bad do you want it? What are you willing to sacrifice to get it? And also, what are you willing to do? Right? You have to be able to do something. Nothing happens just because you wish it to. It just doesn't materialize into the air because you have a thought and then it just manifests. No, manifestation requires action, requires work. And until you're able to put in the work, the blood, the sweat, the tears, all of that, um, your dreams are never going to come true. I don't care what anybody tells you. There's no get rich quick plan. You know, the only way you can get rich quick is if you are born into being rich, right? But other than that, you got to work your butt off for the things that you want. But the Grow Your Vision event, we talked, we talked a lot about that. We talked about ourselves, developing ourselves as a brand and how the moment we step out into the world, we are pitching ourselves to prospective clients, customers, employers, you know, everything that you do say, post on social media becomes part of your brand and it becomes a part of the message that you are giving the world about who you are. You know, when you go to work every day, what is your work ethic like? Are you showing up late? Or are you there early? Are you willing to go the extra mile and do those things that are not in your job description? Or are you doing the bare minimum when, you know, a team, uh, a team member comes and asks you for help? Are you willing to help them? Or are you just about yourself? 
You know, I mean, it's all of these things. And from my own personal experience, the reason why I have been so successful, not in just my career, but in everything that I set my mind to is because I always give more. I don't do what's just is expected of me. I show up early. I do my job. I do things that are not my job. I ask for things that are not within my job responsibility. I'm very vocal about what I want and what I expect because I realize that the more I know, the more I learn, the more marketable I become. It's not about doing somebody else's job or letting this other person slide because they don't want to do their work, so I'm doing more. I don't care about the next person you because know, they're, they're creating their own image, their own reputation. I'm responsible for myself because I understand that my path is not their path. And I don't, I'm not ever going to be content or happy where I am in the moment. I realize that where I am in the moment is only a stepping stone to where I want to be in the future. And until we do what we're supposed to be do, let me rephrase that. Until we do what we're supposed to do in the position that we are placed in, we are never going to get to that next level. You know why? Because with more responsibility, with, well, with more work, right, comes more responsibility. And if I can't prove that I can handle what I have right now, why would anybody give me more? So you have to start thinking about yourself as a brand. Think about yourself, what you have been tasked to do here. And don't worry about what the next person is doing or not doing. What is your brand? What is your reputation? What is your image? What does your work say about you? And and that applies to anything that you can be, you know, you, you can work as a, um, a janitor, you know, in an office building and your job is to clean the building. You better be the best damn, you know, housekeeper, janitor in that building because your goal should not be to stay in that position. Your goal should be to become the person who's in charge of all the janitors and all of housekeeping, right? And then you learn how the building operates. You learn how engineering operates. And there's all these things and you can use that, all of those things as a stepping stone, you know, to ultimately, you could be the CEO of the company one day, should you choose. But you have to understand that in every level is an opportunity for you to grow and learn more. For me as a leader, there's no job that's beneath me. I feel like every job is my job as a leader because if I'm not willing to step in and pitch in when necessary, then what kind of leader does that make me? Like who's going to want to follow me? If all I'm doing is delegating and barking off orders, I'm a team player and I want my team to always know that I have their back. And having their back means that if necessary, I'm going to step in there and help them out with their work. You know, a part of being a great leader is also making sure that you're managing your resources appropriately. But sometimes when there aren't enough resources, you have to let, let your lend your hands to the operation. One of the things um, that we also talked about was the power there is in LinkedIn as a professional platform. I know many of us like to be on Instagram. We like to use Facebook. But if you're not on LinkedIn, you are missing out on so many opportunities to connect with professionals in so many other industries. And those connections can be your next connection to your next career move. If you have not created a LinkedIn profile, or maybe you have one, but you haven't been as active on it, I encourage you to get off Facebook, get off Instagram, and get on LinkedIn if you're really serious about your career Um, Maribel Rivera, who was one of the panelists, gave an outstanding presentation on LinkedIn. There was so much interest, so many questions from her presentation. We didn't have enough time to go through everything. So one of the things I'm thinking about doing is bringing her back and having a special LinkedIn uh, focused workshop so she can walk you through all of the different um, benefits and different ways that you can use LinkedIn um, to grow within your career. One of the things we also talked about that was probably one of my favorite parts of the conversation last week was mentorship and how we go about seeking mentors. Now, I will tell you, um, right now I'm mentoring two young women. These are women who I have relationships with. Women who, 
who were invested in nurturing and developing a relationship with me. And I can't tell you how many times I get emails, messages, comments from individuals who might meet me once and they might be inspired by my story and they want me to mentor them. And you have to understand that mentorship is a huge commitment, right? So if you're asking someone to mentor you, that is because they are invested in your growth and in your development. That requires a huge amount of time. Now, for me to invest my time in someone, I have to know and see that they're going to value my time. So no, if you just jump in my DMs, if you send me an email, tell me you love what I do, that I'm inspiring, can I mentor you? No, I can't mentor you. I'm sorry. I don't know you. One, I don't know how committed you are to your own growth. I don't know what it is that you're doing within your own career, what you have done, what you want to do. Like there's just so much. So for those of you who are seeking mentors, please don't slide into the DMs of people that you just met and don't know just because you see that they're being successful and you want to be successful like they are. If you are seeking a mentor and there's someone that you want to be your mentor, don't ask them to be your mentor off the bat. I encourage you to try and develop a real relationship with the individual. And before you ask them to give you something, what are you willing to give them? How are you willing to be of service to them? How can you support them in what they are doing? And I will tell you that that is why Jessica Martinez is my right hand right now when it comes to the fierce woman because when her and I first met, she didn't want anything from me. What she wanted was to work with me, to learn from me, but to be able to help me in whatever way I needed her help. And so it was a very formal process. She told me what her strengths were, what her skills were, and I asked her to send me her resume. And I reviewed her resume, and from there, we um, established a relationship. We started talking over the phone, through emails. I had an event, and um, I had, as a test, you know, um, had her help me with it. And it was successful. And then, and from there, we have grown. And she is someone who is committed to doing her own work. And whenever she asks for my advice and I give it to her, she takes it because she understands the value that I'm bringing as someone who is almost 20 years older than she is. So for those of you who are seeking mentorships, figure out what you can do, how you can be of service to the person that you are seeking to mentor you. Don't slide up in nobody's messages talking about, can you be my mentor? And you don't have anything to offer because that is the quickest way to turn somebody off. It's the quickest way to turn me off. And I will respectfully, you know, decline, but then I'm going to look at you sideways. Um, And this was the consensus amongst all the panelists, you know, uh, at the event. So don't just take it from me. They all had the same sentiments. Um, one thing, one other thing that I want to talk about is this idea that we have to wait for opportunities to come to us, right? We want to do something. We don't know how to do it. We're waiting around for, I don't know, someone to discover us or for the perfect opportunity to just come knocking on our doors. Sometimes that happens, but more times than not, it doesn't. And so I want to encourage you, stop sitting waiting for opportunities to come to you. If there's something that you want to do and opportunity hasn't knocked yet, I encourage you to go out and create your own opportunities. Almost every single thing that I've done in my entire career is because I've created the opportunity for myself. Um, I wanted to host events. Nobody was hiring me to do events initially because I didn't have any experience. So what did I start doing? I started hosting my own events. Okay, and the more events I hosted and facilitated... Um, The better I became with my public speaking, the more confident I became. My public speaking just really went through the roof. Now I get hired to be a keynote speaker, to facilitate workshops for people, to be a host. All these things that when I first started just doing my writing were not part of my plan. 
But as you grow and you start to develop more skills, the plan changes, it evolves, it expands as it should because we're always evolving and growing. We should never stay in the same space and our dreams should never stay the same. Like we should always have dreams. They should be big, like bigger dreams. And if you're not dreaming big dreams, I don't know what to tell you. Your vision is small. You need to expand your vision. You need to expand your circle. You need to get around people who are, you know, big dreamers so that they can inspire you. Now, I don't care how many people have told you you can't do it. Those are the wrong people. You don't need to be around those people. You need to be around people that are going to tell you that you can do it even when you don't know how you're going to do it. Um, you know, so I guess I'm going to end the, the podcast with this. You have to be bold about what you want. You can't be shy about it. You can't be timid. You can't be quiet. You can't expect people to read your mind. You have to be loud and bold about what you want. And you have to show up as that person, even if you're not that person yet. You show up as that person. You create your own opportunities. You tell people what you are going to do, what you are doing. And eventually, all of that stuff will start manifesting for you. But only if you put in the work. So this week, I want you to think about that for yourself. How are you living boldly? That's the question for this week. If you want to have further dialogue about this, shoot me an email. Shoot me a DM. Let's chat. Until next time, mi gente. Go out there and crush those goals. Thank you for listening to the Nancy Ruffin Show.